In this episode, I'm going to show you how to read a turbo compressor map. I'll tell you all about the funny numbers and the squiggly lines. And with this information, when you wrap your head around this, it will help you choose the right size turbo for your car. All right, so we're going to start by having a quick look at the compressor map itself. This is basically the operating area of the compressor. So down here we have pressure, uh, we have engine airflow along this axis, and this is basically where you want your turbo to be operating. So we have efficiency islands, uh, RP, you know, turbine RPM, uh, there's a surge line and a choke line. So we'll take a look at these one by one and explain what they all mean. So the first one we're going to look at is the pressure ratio. Now this is not strictly boost pressure on its own, it's actually the ratio of the pressure of the air coming out of the outlet versus the pressure of the air going into the inlet. Now that's important because the inlet pressure is not always atmospheric. If you have a pressure drop, then the pressure ratio is going to be different. So for example, let's say you had one bar of atmospheric pressure and you have one bar of boost pressure, that is a pressure ratio of two. However, if the pressure at the inlet drops and you still have one bar of boost, you've actually reduced your pressure ratio. So along the bottom axis, we have corrected airflow. Now this is the amount of air, the volume or the mass of air. You'll see it in uh, two different units here. Sometimes it's volume, sometimes it's mass. But either way, it is purely the amount of air going through the compressor. So the next thing to look at is the surge line. So this is basically the operating threshold for your turbo. So for example, if we were operating at 10 pounds per minute, and we go up here and we're using a pressure ratio of 2.5, we're actually operating in surge. So that means if your car was accelerating and operating in this area here, it would actually be compressor surging. It'd be making the horrible fluttering noise and it would be flogging on the thrust bearings and doing all sorts of nasty things and the boost would be going all over the place. So ideally, you don't want to be operating in this region here. The next one to look at is the choke line. Now this basically represents the maximum operating conditions of the turbo. You really don't want to be operating out here because all you're going to do is make heat and spin the turbo faster than it needs to be and cause it to wear out faster and all sorts of bad things will happen. So these lines here represent the boundaries of where you want to operate your turbo. These lines along here are the turbo RPM. So basically that is how fast your compressor is spinning. The next one, this is the important part. These are the efficiency islands. So you'll see right here in the middle, we have the area of highest efficiency. Now, when we're talking about efficiency, this is the one that's gonna be hard to wrap your head around. It is basically the adiabatic efficiency of the turbo. Now, when you compress air, it naturally heats up. This efficiency is how much more it heats up than what it should be if it was ideal. So basically you're getting heat from the compressor, heat from the, the turbine flows through to the compressor. So no compressor is 100% efficient. So when you compress the air, even though it will naturally rise in temperature, it will go even more because of the efficiency of the turbo. So the lower the efficiency, the hotter it makes the air for a given boost pressure. So if we can do a real world example, we're going to look at say a TDO4 turbo, which is standard on a lot of WRXs. So you nail the throttle, boost starts to build up, we're moving up here in the compressor map. Uh, we hit a pressure ratio of two, that's basically our peak boost. Then as engine RPM increases, so too does airflow. It's going to start moving along this way. So we cross over the island of maximum efficiency. That's great. Uh, typically, manufacturers will make this happen somewhere around about three, 4,000 RPM. So the car is making best efficiency in the meat of its torque curve. The problem is, if you put a boost controller on there and you try and hold high boost at high RPM, you start moving over here and you'll notice we're crossing a lot of RPM lines here too. So the turbine speed is getting up there and we're also approaching, uh, we're falling off the efficiency island. So the efficiency is dropping dramatically. Uh, you could also assume that the exhaust back pressure is increasing. The charge temperature is going up there. So you're trying to force a tiny little turbo to do more than what it can actually deliver. So once you start pushing it out here, that turbo is not going to be making power. So that's a quick overview on how to read a turbo compressor map. Now obviously there's a lot of really complicated information and formulas that go into all of this. So if this gets your turbo juices flowing, have a look online and you can find all the information that you need.